Okay, before you do your homework on functions, I want to just show you real briefly some of the things you're going to have to do in your assignment. Now let's remember first that a function is a relation in which no two ordered pairs have the same first coordinate. That means all the x's have to be different. So we have four ways that we show a function. We have the list of ordered pairs, we have a graph, we have a circle map, and we have a rule. Now these are the same ways that we show to any relation, but we use them specifically for functions as well. So now let's take a look at um, how to actually tell if something is a function or not. If we're given a list of ordered pairs, all we have to do is look at all of the x's and make sure that they're all different. If they're all different, then this is a function. Over here, when I look at the x's, they're not all different. I have the number 1 being paired with a 2, and I have the number 1 being paired with a 4, and that is not allowed, so this one is not a function. Now let's look at circle maps. Notice that all three of these values are mapped to just one y value. So that means none of the x's are being used twice and this one's a function. But now look at this one. The number 1 is being mapped to the 2 and to the 9. That means I've got the ordered pair 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 9 as part of this relation. That is enough to show that this one is not a function. You cannot have more than one arrow coming out of one of your domain values. Notice on this circle map that I have multiple arrows coming into the number 2. But remember, that's a y value. And it's OK for the y values to repeat. This function would have 1 being mapped to 2 and negative 5 is being mapped to 2. It's OK for the y's to repeat. It's not OK for the x's. And so notice how these all have just one arrow coming out from them. That means this is a function. Let's look at one more. This circle has all of the arrows heading to the value of 2. But this is a function because there's only one arrow that leaves each of these values. You can have as many arrows as you want coming to a single number in your range, but not in your domain. So this one is a function. For graphs, we're going to use what's called the vertical line test. If I can draw a vertical line that crosses in more than one place. So for example, over here in this circle, I can draw a vertical line right here, and it crosses my graph at these two points. Well, this is the point 3, 4, and this is the point 3, negative 4. Notice how the x value, 3, is being used twice. And we can tell that graphically because I have two points that are on top of each other vertically. So over here, I can draw as many vertical lines as I want, and I'm never going to cross that more than once. So this is a function. Over here, all I need is one line to show me that this is not a function. Okay, let's look at the two at the bottom. I can draw lots of vertical lines here. I'm never going to cross my graph more than once. So this one is a function. This one, you know, it's good here. It's good here. But look at that. I've got two points that are vertically on top of each other. That means they share the same x-coordinate. So this one is not a function. All you need is one line that crosses more than once, and it's not a function. This is problem number 20 on page 361. I've got a function written here in function notation, 
And remember from the video that it talked about f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. So for number 20, I'm supposed to find f at negative 2. So f at negative 2. All that means is I'm going to take the function f and I'm going to put in negative 2. So if I take my function f, which is written above here, I'm going to take out the x and I'm going to put in a negative 2. So what, what I'm really doing is I'm taking my function rule, I'm taking out the x, and I'm putting in a negative 2. And then I'm going to follow my order of operations, which tells me that I need to multiply before I add. And when I multiply negative 3 times negative 2, I get a positive 6. And then I have to add my 2. So my final answer is f at negative 2 equals 8.